I'm gonna start from where I left it last time on last video because we were talking about, you know, people's physical appearances and how we sometimes judge them, not realizing that we are actually being very judgmental or discriminating. I want to start actually repeating a quote that I that I said on my last episode. Dan Levi says in the TV show Shit's Creek. I don't see labels, I see people. So let's get it started. How can we sometimes judge a person if they're pretty or ugly by a tattoo they have? Yes, I'm gonna start with tattoos. Well, I'm in the opinion that if you don't like tattoos, don't get them. Nobody's forcing you to get one. But please let me know and explain how a tattoo is making someone more or less capable of doing a job. Exactly, it doesn't. It is discrimination. Having tattoos can lead to rejection or prejudice resulting from pre-convinced notions that people often hold. Some negative perceptions are that tattooed people are from more rebellious or less intelligent with lower levels of competence, inhibition and sociability. But this stigma surrounding tattoos in the workplace hopefully is slowly changing. If you feel alert to, instead of getting upset from what I'm saying because you might disagree, let's just have a conversation. Think about why someone being different or doing different thing from you bothers you so much that you need to call them in an insulting way or make them feel bad about themselves. Look, I think where you are right now, I'm only talking about this after doing some reflection and realizing this myself. I'm only saying all of this because I've been the person who has judged without understanding. But the thing is, the more I understand a topic, the more I can surrender my criticisms and become more open-minded, accept others, challenge my thoughts. Why don't we put our energy towards something that actually affects us? Like, for example, if you're a woman and you have a lower salary than a man in your position, why don't let's just start talking about equal rights? Put your energy to do something about it, to make other people's lives easier and better. Don't you want to have kids that have a better world than you did? Yes, you can call this feminism or whatever, but feminism is usually wrongly mistaken by going to a parade naked to scream for general rights. Well, let me correct you. No, feminism is just fighting for equality, because if you ever have a daughter, you want her to have a better life than you did, right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if your kids are gonna get tattoos, are gonna smoke, because they will end up doing whatever they feel like they have to do, the same way you did. But you do want a better world for them so they don't struggle the same things, right? At the end of your week, at the end of your life, don't you want to feel like you have contributed more than you criticized? Alisa Milano says in her book, sorry but not sorry. Imagine the uproar if a man calls another man honey. Imagine your own reaction to a grown man calling your daughter honey and the difference in that reaction if he called your boy honey. There you will see the biases revealed in language. 
patriarchy and homophobia. Again, I'm only saying and talking about all the things that I have experienced. So, if you have a different perspective, different experience or point of view, please let me know. For example, if you talk constantly out loud to yourself without actually saying anything, what does this mean? One time, I realized that I used to say words out loud while I was working or doing something. I realized that it caught other people's attention, but I wasn't trying to, as they were like, what do you say again? Are you talking to me? And I wasn't. I was in my own head, probably just trying to call attention. I know a couple of people in my life who do this to the extreme, just 24 hours a day. So I thought that was normal and standard. However, after going to the psychologist for a few years, I realized that one thing is to say things from time to time, another is to narrate everything you are doing. Could be work related, could be getting a packet of crisps out of the drawer, could be sounds or commercial ringtones, anything. They just generally think out loud pretty much all the time or sing repeatedly commercial tones. Michelle C. Bruton Brooks explains reasons that someone may talk excessively include mental health disorders, personality characteristics and personality disorder. Excessive talking can create a social burden for both the talking person and their listeners. Now I see how irritating this is to others because it actually irritates me when people do it around me. It becomes a problem when they don't realize they're doing it. One person said she does it because she feels lonely. The other said because she wants to, period, end of the conversation. I now know that even though it's not a mental disorder like other things I mentioned here. It is extremely excruciating for other people. That constant call for attention is also exhausting because people cannot give you their 100% of attention in case you actually suddenly say something relevant. Maybe ask yourself, do I do this because my husband doesn't talk? start to talk to him. Talking to a therapist can help analyze why you do that. Oh, and regular meditation may also help manage a critical internal monologue. A meditation practitioner can teach you how to dismiss negative thoughts that don't serve you well while also creating more balance in your thought patterns. Writing out your feelings in a journal can help too. When somebody talks out loud to themselves, the people around them develop a self-defense mechanism where they need to block out their voices so they don't go crazy themselves. The problem comes when they are suddenly actually talking to them and they don't respond immediately. But people who talk too much don't seem to get this balance. Why? Well, a number of my colleagues on PT have written about the difficulty of some of us have either listening to others or to ourselves. Listening requires complex auditory processing according to Daniel P. Ellis of Columbia University. Someone might have need to talk all the time and step over your boundaries because they need attention and they need to feel important. In fact, it is a symptom of some basic psychological problem, but usually is something of maniac in states, agitation or anxiety. The psychologist Jennifer Delgado defines it clearly. The 
these people are people so absorbed in themselves to presume that everything that happens to them is of general interest. They talk a lot and do not listen. People for whom the problems of the others are not worth of listening. Behind those attempts to, to monopolize the conversation hides usually a great insecurity. People who talk too much about themselves feel good when they receive attention and others listen to them. So what do you think? Do you have an experience on this? Are you the person who realizes that other people talk too much? Or are you the person who talks too much? Let me know in the comments, hit like and subscribe.